Hi friends. In today's video, I'm doing a $5 food challenge. I've got five bucks to pay for everything I'm going to eat in the next three days. I'll try to get enough food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So that's nine meals for $5. As usual, I'll get non-produce items from Walmart and I'll stop by my produce market on the way home for veggies. And let's just get straight to it. Here's what I got. I have a box of pasta that I thought I would use for a minestrone soup and possibly a pasta dish. I picked up a can of tomatoes and that was actually pulled from my pantry, but I'll use current Walmart pricing for that. I also have a box of Jiffy muffin mix, which is gonna add some much needed bulk to my meals and also to help me stay full. I have some red lentils and I also picked up six eggs, which I'm gonna use one for the cornbread and I'll use the rest for breakfast. I was actually seven cents over budget, so I ended up taking out a small amount of these red lentils. I had looked online before I left and saw that the market I usually buy my produce at had red lentils for 99 cents a pound. So I knew before I went that I was going to get those and then I just weighed them and ended up getting about three quarters of a pound. They're a super inexpensive source of protein and vitamins and I do love lentils so this just made sense. I also picked up a jalapeno for five cents. I figured it was a cheap way to get some extra color and flavor into my food. They also had squash on sale for 79 cents a pound, so I picked up one of those as well. So once again, here are all of my items for my haul, and let's go ahead and get started making my food. The first thing I want to do is make the cornbread. But before I do that, I need to chop up my jalapeno. I want to get some flavor from this without all the heat. When you roll your peppers, it does help to dislodge all of those seeds and there's a lot of heat in the seeds. So I wanna make sure that I get rid of all of those. And I'll use the rounds to garnish my dish with and I'll use the chopped jalapeno to flavor my cornbread. I wanna try something new with this cornbread mix. I've never made hush puppies on my channel and so I thought I would try to make at least a few with this mix and then I'll also make some regular muffins. Normally the box calls for milk but I'm going to be using water and because I want my batter to be thick in order to form the hush puppies I'm only going to add just enough water to get it to the right consistency. Then I'll pull out my hush puppies and I'll add the remaining water to make my regular muffins. I accidentally added a little too much water, so I thickened it back up with some flour, but that's also a good trick to have in case maybe you need to stretch out your mix to get one more muffin. For example, it makes six, but maybe you need seven muffins. You can also just add more regular cornmeal. So I did this a couple times until I got the right consistency for my hush puppies. This was just about perfect. You want it to form a ball and be able to stay in that ball in order to fry it. I'm also thinking about trying one in my air fryer. So I'll just pull out the amount that I want and then I'm going to put those in the fridge until tomorrow or the next day when I want to fry those up. Then I added a little more water back in to thin it out to a regular cornbread consistency and added in my jalapenos. I think I'll make some regular sized muffins and also some cornbread bites. So I have four regular muffins, four cornbread bites, and four hush puppies that are still in the fridge waiting to be cooked. Before I get started, let me tell you that today's video is sponsored by Dowan. For over 30 years, Dowan has been dedicated to traditional and modern design in dinnerware. They have a beautiful assortment of ceramic dinnerware that encompasses clean lines with a serene white collection, a more colorful one, and also this stunning alfresco collection that includes a pale blue base. They allowed me to choose which product I wanted, and as soon as I saw these small soup bowls, I knew that I wanted to have these in my kitchen. Dowin is providing a 20% discount code 
for my viewers. I'll put that code and a link to their site in the description area of my video. This bowl comes in two sizes, but I chose the smaller size, which holds 14 ounces, which is just under two cups. I have some bowls that are just too big, so I felt like this was the perfect size for me, and I do love the clean, modern, peaceful aesthetic of this bowl. These would make a great gift for somebody, and they also have a lot of items that you may need for Thanksgiving, like serving platters, casserole dishes, etc. My viewers frequently see me using ramekins in my videos and I noticed that they also had a nice collection of those and they even had some colored versions. I'm looking forward to plating some of my meals with my new bowls. Now back to the video. For my first breakfast, I diced up some carrots, zucchini, and tomato. One of my viewers shared a picture on Facebook of an omelet that she ate the other day and it looks so pretty and it reminded me that I haven't made an omelet in a long time. So I thought I would do that now and I'm going to try to recreate one that's similar to the one that she had. And I'll be using two of my eggs in this and I'm adding the vegetables to the bottom of the pan so that my colorful vegetables will show through when I turn my omelet. So I'm just going to spread them out and give them a little bit of garlic powder and then I'm going to pour the egg in there. I think that the one my viewer ate had little pieces of sausage in it also. I hope that if any of you eat something that looks particularly inspiring to you that you'll share it with me or if you make any of the recipes that you got from my channel, I hope you'll take a picture of it and tag me on either Facebook or Instagram at Ardent Michelle. I love to see food pictures, but I'm sure you probably already guessed that about me. I used some of the vegetables to kind of garnish the top of this with and then I added some sriracha hot sauce to the top and I served it with a half of a cornbread muffin. I enjoyed this so much. Not sure why I don't make omelets more often and I really liked having the combination of the vegetables in the omelet and also the fresh veggies on top. I had originally thought I might do scrambled eggs with zucchini and tomatoes because I really like that combination but this was so good that I ate it for the first breakfast and also the second. Eating this alongside half of the muffin helped it to be more filling, and this is actually about the size of breakfast that I usually eat. I had to be kind of strategic with the muffins, so for my last breakfast, I only had one egg left, which I fried up, and then I ate that alongside a whole muffin just to be more filling. And actually, I ended up topping my muffin like this because I realized I've never had eggs on cornbread before, and this was actually really good. I would eat this again. While I was eating this, I was thinking of how much better the consistency of regular cornbread is and that I should have added a little oil in place of the fat in the milk that I didn't put in. But then I was thinking, you know, we don't add oil to the Jiffy Mix at all, but we do add oil to regular cornbread recipes, which helps to improve the overall consistency. So I'm going to experiment the next time I make the Jiffy Cornbread and add a bit of oil and see if I can get the consistency of regular cornbread because I do love the convenience of these little box mixes, but I definitely think that it can be improved upon. My plan was to use the rotini pasta as a main ingredient in my lunches and for the first meal I decided to make myself a pasta salad and I'm making two servings because that's the portion size that I'll eat and I'm okay with having a little leftover if I don't eat it all and that's one and a half cups of dry pasta. I'm adding in a little oil so it doesn't stick together and then while it's cooling I'll cut up some vegetables and make my dressing. Even though I tried to get the firmest Persian cucumber I could find, I do think it could be crispier, so I'm going to put it in some water in the fridge for a while. I have enough of the eggs and pasta and lentils, but I'm going to have to be careful with the vegetables to make sure I have enough for each meal. So I'm just cutting up a very small amount, and I'm also going to make sure to cut them into smaller pieces because it tends to look like more when you give the vegetables a finer dice. 
For my dressing, I'm remembering that smoky paprika dressing that I made not too long ago. I love that and I think it would go perfectly with this pasta salad. So I'm going to whip that up real quick and I'm not going to show you that since I recently made that on my channel, but I'll put the recipe in the description area of my video for you. But the main ingredients are red wine vinegar, oil, smoked paprika, and sugar. It has a lovely smoky yet sweet and sour flavor that I love. I'll add half of the dressing now and the other half right before I serve it. Here is my first lunch and let me just say I do love how my food looks in these Dowin ceramic bowls and I think the portion size is perfect. I almost forgot to add the Persian cucumbers but I diced them up at the very end and added them in and they did add such a nice crispy element to the salad. I was really glad that I let those sit in water for a while and I loved the flavor of that dressing on there. This was very filling, so I ended up only eating one of the mini cornbread muffins. Two of the pasta servings have 16 grams of protein, so I feel like even though this is an extreme budget challenge, this was a fairly healthy meal. For my next meal, I'm making minestrone soup. Here are the ingredients I'll be using, and I'll also use a small amount of vegetable bouillon for my broth. I'm planning to use the jalapenos as a garnish and then the other ingredients will be a part of the soup. And as far as the diced tomatoes go, I love diced tomatoes in pretty much everything. So I'm going to have to be very sparing with these so that they last me throughout all of my recipes. I want my tomatoes to simmer for a while in the vegetable broth and then I'll add in my vegetables. And for my zucchini, I lightly sauteed that before adding it to the soup. My pasta is already cooked and ready to go, so I'm gonna add that in last. love this soup. I don't know why I don't make minestrone more often because I always love it so much. I do wish I would have added about a quarter cup of split lentils to this just to boost the nutritional content. Minestrone usually does have some kind of bean in it so that would have been nice but I forgot about it when I was filming this. I also enjoyed those fresh sliced jalapenos on top. They always add a crunchiness to it and I also added just a tiny amount of shredded carrot as a garnish to make it look nice on the plate. And I usually do like to add some Louisiana hot sauce to my soup, so that would have been nice here as well, but it was perfect just like this. Such a simple soup, and also I like the fact that if you want, you can make that pasta up in advance and have it in the refrigerator and then just pull it out as needed. This rotini works especially well for that. The main ingredient for my dinners was the split red lentils, and I was able to get almost two cups worth. I rinsed these about six times. Just to make sure that they were clean, I kind of struggled on how I wanted to use my lentils. I had so many different ideas. Some people use red lentils to make a high protein tortilla with, but I was thinking I don't really have anything that I wanted to add with that. So maybe that would be better done in a different video. And then I was also thinking that I could make a high protein pasta sauce with the lentils, which would have been great if I would have had some tomato paste or tomato sauce in my ingredients, but I didn't, so I knew I wouldn't make that. I did, however, want to just try a sample of it with one of my pieces of tomato. I added a little bit of garlic in with the lentils, and this was really good. It didn't taste anything like pasta sauce because, again, I didn't have enough of a rich tomato flavor in there. However, it was still tasty. So ultimately, I decided to cook my lentils with just some salt and pepper, and I wanted to leave my tomatoes whole. However, I did kind of cut them up a little bit with my spoon in the pan to make the tomato chunks a little bit smaller. I guess I could have gotten 
some crushed tomatoes, but then those pieces probably would have been too small for me. Anyway, I let this cook a good long while. I added a little bit of olive oil and then some sauteed zucchini. There are so many different seasonings I could add to this, but I only want to use salt and pepper because the flavor of the lentils are so nice on their own. I enjoyed this so much that I ate this for the first and the second night. The first night I garnished it with a sauteed zucchini and the second night I used some of my sliced jalapenos. According to the USDA, one cup of dried red lentils has almost 46 grams of protein. So we had almost two cups. So we probably had somewhere in the neighborhood of 80 grams of protein. And we got that for 78 cents, not to mention the other vitamins and minerals in red lentils. For my last meal of the video, I'm going to make a lentil curry. One of my viewers sent me some spices and it had this Thai red curry in it. So I thought I'd try this in this recipe. And here are the ingredients just in case you want to make this with your spices. I tried this first to see how it was and it does have some heat to it. So I'm going to need to be careful with this so that I don't get it too hot. I'm going to temper my spices in some oil first before I add in my lentils. This is what is left over from all of the lentils that I made in that big pot. And I did use a strainer, so this is mostly just lentils and vegetables. It's very thick. I had thought I would try a couple of these in the air fryer and compare them with the fried ones, but I didn't feel like getting my air fryer out. Unfortunately, I have a small kitchen, so I don't have enough counter space for all of my appliances. So if anybody has tried Hush Puppies in the air fryer, let me know how they turn out. I'm sure I would like regular cornbread Hush Puppies much better, but still, I think these will be good. And they're browning up nicely. So here is my final meal. We have the red lentil curry, which is also called dal. First, I'm going to try the hush puppies. They're crispy on the outside and surprisingly fluffy and moist on the inside. I actually think these are moister with a better texture than the muffins I made. I think that's probably because they were fried quickly instead of in the oven where they have more of a chance to dry out. I forgot to add a little oil into this batter like I talked about earlier that I was going to do. Anyway, the curry is delicious also. It has a touch of heat to it, but it's not overbearing, if that makes any sense. I would say this meal is a huge success. I enjoyed this and I can't wait to try these hush puppies again and next time I'm going to put some corn in them and maybe even some cheese or green chilies. There's so many different things you could do with these hush puppies and I do love the fact that I was able to make hush puppies with that jiffy cornbread mix. It just, it's a nice shortcut. When I realized I had half of a Persian cucumber and a lot of pasta still left over, I decided to make a quick Asian salad. There used to be a restaurant called The Soup Plantation, and when my oldest son was little, I would take him there with me. He would get the cooked rotini noodles, and then he would put rice vinegar and oil on them. It was one of his favorite things to get there.
We all love that restaurant, and unfortunately, they went out of business during the pandemic. He recently brought home some tamales for us that he gets from a street vendor in Newport Beach, and they are so good. I wanted to return the favor and make him something that I know he'll love. His palate is a little more refined these days, so I had to add a few more ingredients. I feel like even though the budget was only $5, I did get some very nutritious meals out of this haul. I hope you liked my video. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and I'll see you Sunday. Morning has broken, no windows are open Wanna feel the wind blow through my hair Which way do I follow? What happens tomorrow? I turn to you and hope you can guide the way Sometimes